Oswald J. Smith, a great revivalist, shared a story that was carried in the Korean newspaper many, 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 many decades ago. And he talked about this Christian missionary. When the war in Korea broke out, this Christian missionary packed his wife and his children and began to flee out of the country in order to return back to his home country, the United States. And in the midst of fleeing, I don't know if they were driving or they were walking, they began to hear the cry of a little child. Whoa, 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 whoa. A cry of desperation. And the wife looked at the husband missionary and said, let's, let's look for where this cry is coming from. The husband said, no, we are running for our lives. It's not time to save another person's life. The wife continued to insist and insist and persist until they stopped. They began to look, where is this cry coming from? Traced, traced, traced. Found that it was from under the bridge. By the time they got under the bridge, they saw a scene that I'm not sure I would ever forget after reading it. They saw a woman who had taken off all of her clothes, had just given birth to a child under the bridge in the midst of the wall. This woman wrapped the child. Hi guys, this is Emeka Anslem and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. I just want to say thank you for always coming back and back again to my channel to watch my content. I really hope that they've been a medium of great blessings to you. All right, let's get back to the video. Yeah. To keep the child from cold, by the way, this was winter. And not only did the woman wrap the child, the woman folded her naked body around the child to further keep the child from cold and death by the time they got there they found a living child of course the child was crying but a dead mother frozen to death they took this child ran away with this child many decades later the boy came back from college university and came to his father and said dad i've always wanted to ask you a question all my siblings are Americans. How come I have Asian features? And the man looked at the child. He said, I've been waiting for you to ask me. Now, this is the story of how you were rescued. The boy said, you mean I was never born in this family? The man said, no. He said, can you take me back to the same bridge where my mother died for me? The father said, yes, let's go. Took him there, the boy got to the same spot, removed his clothes. The same way the mother removed her clothes. And began to cry and wail and weep. And that's what J. Smith said. That is the power of salvation. What happened? The mother had to die for the young boy to live. That is the same thing Jesus did for you and I. He began to thank the mother. Thank you. What my question is, what life had the boy lived to warrant the mother dying for him? Can you picture this in your mind? I'm not talking of Hamatan. I'm talking of winter. Remove her clothes knowing that somebody will hear the cry of this young child. Do you know the price that Jesus paid? Do you even understand what Good Friday is about? Whether it is Friday or Thursday, that's not the issue. The issue is that one day he died. He became our substitute like that woman. That woman became the substitute of the child. Take me, let my child leave. But in our own case, our substitute is not dead. He died to win us, but he's alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our substitute, Jesus, is alive. That's why when we call his name, he answers like he will answer tonight. 
Will somebody shout his name tonight? Could you let me hear you scream his name? Without fear, without apologies, shout his name. And there is no other name wherewith man shall be saved. Salvation is not an upgrade. Salvation is an exchange. Our life, old nature was taken, new nature was given. Salvation is not an upgrade. Belonging to Jesus is not a cult. Belonging to Jesus is not a religion. It's beyond that. Belonging to Jesus by the power of salvation is a life exchange. That's why when the altar call is made over the last few months, one of the songs that jumps into my mind is I just wish and it flows from my spirit. Do people really understand what they are doing? And then you hear me sing, I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am glad. I'm so glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. Sing it, everybody. I'm so glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. Come on. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Sing it. I belong to my Lord. I am so glad. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. Please be seated. In the day of His power. As the power of the gospel is expanded, the first and crucial thing that must be talked upon the mountains and the hilltops is the power of salvation. That suddenly life can be exchanged. Suddenly you can confess Jesus as Lord and Savior and there is an exchange of life. I don't know how many people in many churches know what I'm saying. It is so simple. I just gave you a practical illustration. So when Jesus hung upon the tree, there was a substitute. Drop your own life Pick up a new one. The power of salvation. <laughs> That's one of the first things you discover. 